What's up guys and welcome back to the first creature feature of season seven. On the last members poll we did on the community tab, the short fin Mako shark narrowly lost out to the black tip reef shark. So I thought it was only fair that the short fin Mako had its chance to shine here on Shark Bites. Strap yourselves in, it's creature feature time. The short fin Mako shark is a medium to large size shark that inhabits most of the world's oceans. This is probably one of the most widely distributed sharks there is. You can find them in temperate oceans, tropical oceans, they're pretty much everywhere. I think the only places you probably wouldn't find them are the icy cold waters of the Arctic and Antarctic. They've been found at depths of 888 meters, which is a pretty aesthetic number by the way, but that is pretty deep for an oceanic shark species. That's nearly a kilometer down. And they average in size somewhere between two to three meters, but the longest verified individual came in at a whopping 4.45 meters. That's nearly 15 feet long. You're pretty much talking average great white shark size there, which is frightening. Although there was a report of a short fin mako shark that was caught in Marmaris, Turkey back in the 1950s that was even bigger than that. The Marmaris mako was photographically examined by scientists who measured it to be somewhere between 5.7 and 6.1 meters long. <laughs> six meters long. You could just see how big this individual was in the picture here. Those are sailors in the top right there. The scientists used average heights for Turkish sailors and the known height of those steps to calculate it. So it's probably not too far off being correct. What an absolute giant. But of course, because we didn't have a reliable measurement taken at the time, this is always gonna be debated. And unfortunately it doesn't classify as a world record because it's photo evidence. I do think though that the shark we're looking at there is probably the biggest maker that has ever been caught. Officially, the largest one that's been caught on hook and line came in at 600 kilograms, and that record has been held for the last 10 years. 600 kilograms, that's about as heavy as one of those massive adult male Kodiak bears. What a beast. Comparing Makos to Great Whites though isn't that unusual because they are actually pretty closely related to one another. They're both in the Lamnidae family of sharks, which include Paul Beagles, Salmon Sharks, and the other species of Mako, the Longfin. They're even so closely related that researchers discovered about 10 years ago that Makos might actually be the ancestors of Great White Sharks. For years, paleontologists debated the ancestry of Great Whites with many people suggesting that they descended from the Megatooth Sharks, AKA Megalodon. But it wasn't until they found an intermediate between the two species that they discovered they were more closely related to Makos. Carcharhinus habeli, also known as the Hubble's white shark, was discovered in Peru. And this ancient shark species was thought to be closely related to the broad-toothed Mako sharks. So the Hubble's white shark was that intermediate species between the two and shows the transition from broad-toothed Makos to modern great white sharks. It all came down to the teeth in reality. Makos have very smooth teeth, whereas great whites have serrated teeth. And the Hubble's white shark did have some serrations on its teeth suggesting that it was a little midway point between the two species. So if anyone in the future tries to tell you that great white sharks are the best, you just tell them they descended from Makos. Paleozoology is always hotly debated, I should say though, so people are always trying to prove other people wrong. So people are always gonna debate this fact and some new evidence could come up in the future that proves it otherwise, but the research paper itself has some pretty good scientific backing. Speaking of Mako shark teeth though, they are crazy. Those pearly whites are pointed and angle inwards and are fanned out across the mouth so much so that you can actually see their teeth outside their mouth while they're swimming by. They do look pretty scary, but those Mako shark teeth are perfectly adapted to help them catch their prey species, which are usually things like cephalopods or other fish species. They'll lunge forwards from below and because their teeth are pointed backwards, once they clamp down, they'll just rip off chunks of flesh. Their teeth are designed for ripping and pulling as opposed to sawing like the serrated teeth of white sharks. But sometimes Mako sharks have been known to bite off a little bit more than they can chew when they're trying to take down billfish or swordfish. Makos have been found in Italy, South Africa, and California with swordfish bills lodged in their heads, which have often proved fatal as the sharks go on to wash up dead on the beach. It does tell us though, there's a pretty interesting dynamic between those two species, of which for us scientists, we've still got to learn a little bit more about. Mako sharks are an opportunistic shark species though, and will feed on a variety of different prey items, including dolphins. There's tons of footage and pictures online of Mako sharks who have literally bitten porpoises and dolphins in in half during their attacks. They tend to swim below their target and attack from below, biting at either the flanks or the tail fins. And that's because they're trying to immobilize that prey species and let it bleed out before they come back and finish it off. It does make you think though, just how impressive that bite force has to be to be able to completely remove the tail of a dolphin. Well, their bite force 
is impressive. Back in 2020, during some at-sea experiments, it was discovered that a mako shark that doesn't even look that big, by the way, had a bite force measured at over 13,000 newtons, which at that time made it the strongest bite force ever measured for a shark species. I'm not aware of that record being beaten in the last three years, but it's still pretty impressive. No wonder they can just sever the tails off their prey species. 13,000 newtons bite force, that is nuts. And like I said, that one didn't even look like a particularly big individual. Imagine what that one from Marmaris could have done. Not only do they have those impressive teeth and crazy bite force, on top of those two predatory feats, the mako shark is fast. And I mean real fast. This shark is known to be the fastest shark species in the ocean with burst speeds somewhere between 30 and 46 miles per hour. You imagine a car coming past you on a road at 50 miles per hour. Well, that's about how fast this shark can move over short distances. It's incredible. There is a little bit of range there, I suppose, but that's because something like this is really difficult to actually accurately measure. You will see a lot of misinformation online about these burst speeds, and I don't really know why that's happened. For example, some places online will try and tell you that mako sharks can get up to 80, 90 mile per hour burst speeds, but those haven't been reliably measured and have probably been plucked out of thin air. The real numbers are somewhere between 30 and 46 miles per hour, which is still really impressive and reliably measured. You can just see how easy it is for mako sharks to keep up with boats that are traveling at around 10 or 15 miles per hour though. There's loads of videos of them following lures underneath boats online, but it's the acceleration that's impressive. The shark in these videos sometimes almost stops, but it's the ease at which it catches up to the boat again that just shows you how fast they actually are. But how are they even able to get to these speeds? Well, it's partly down to the fact that they're endothermic like the other lambda sharks and because they've got that funky countercurrent heat exchange system, which allows them to maintain a higher internal body temperature than that of the surrounding water. But it's mostly to do with their skin. All sharks have dermal denticles, which are those placoid scales that run one way down the body. But the mako shark dermal denticles are actually one of the most flexible in the shark world. On certain parts of their body, i.e. their sides and their fins, these tiny dermal denticles are capable of flexing 40 degrees out from the body. And this makes the sharks considerably more hydrodynamic, reducing drag from water flow and enabling them to hit those mega burst speeds. Aeronautical engineers are already working on trying to replicate the mako shark dermal denticles to be used on airplanes and boats to try and reduce fuel costs and obtain higher speeds. They've even been replicated for Speedo, the swimwear brand, to be used in swimming competitions. So we've gathered that mako sharks are elite level predators. They've got the crazy teeth, the mega impressive bite force, they're the fastest shark in the ocean. Anything else we can throw in? Oh yeah, they're probably the most intelligent shark species out there. So they don't have a huge brain, but we know that bigger brains does not equal higher intelligence. But the mako shark does have the highest brain to body size ratio which is a much better measure of intelligence. It's been reported that mako sharks are fast learning sharks capable of displaying unique and novel behaviors when tested. One of which was not rolling back their eyes during repeated feeding from researchers. Eye rolling is an innate behavior in some shark species and it's done to try and protect the eye from damage when they bite onto a prey item. So for mako sharks to gradually stop rolling their eyes back during feeding, it would suggest that the sharks started to perceive the researchers as less threatening, which is crazy. These are fish. It's no wonder Sam Jay and the cast of Deep Blue Sea wanted to use these shark species for their research. They are brainy fish. In that film, they were looking for a cure for Alzheimer's using makos, which is research that's being done right now, admittedly not on makos, but Anything promising is many, many years away. Although recent Brazilian research on mako sharks showed that nine out of 10 of the most overexpressed genes in mako shark livers related to tumor suppression in humans. There were genes related to the suppression of colon cancer, prostate cancer, and breast cancer. And there were even genes found related to the suppression of glioma, which is the type of brain tumor that my dad had. The researchers do still need to extract these compounds and test them on actual tumors though to understand their efficacy. But some years down the line, they could be used to produce therapeutic drugs to treat patients with these diseases. It should be noted here that those Brazilian scientists aren't suggesting we go out and fish all the mako sharks to try and find cures for these diseases, by the way. But they did say perhaps mako sharks that have already been incidentally caught and killed could be used to try and obtain samples for this research. Speaking of fisheries, once again, this is probably the major threat to mako sharks worldwide. They're regularly caught as bycatch in pelagic commercial longline and gillnet fisheries. 
When they're caught in these fisheries, they're often taken for their meat and fins, which is then sold around the world. And it's this threat that's led to them being listed globally now as an endangered species on the IUCN red list, with their populations continuing to decrease. This classification status was changed back in 2019 from vulnerable to endangered. So you can see that their populations really are struggling. Despite their population levels dwindling though, these shark species still do have their fair share of run-ins with humans from time to time. ISAF have listed 10 unprovoked shark attacks from Mako sharks down the years, three of which have been fatal. Spearfishers are usually the ones most at risk from Mako sharks, and we did feature a Mako shark attack on one of the shark scientists reacts to shark attack videos we did. Stick around to the end screen to check this one out in more detail, by the way. There's also a ton of provoked attacks, most notably happening on board boats. Shortfin Makos are a big recreational game fish that are highly sought out from game fishermen around the world. But when they've been hauled into the boat, they're so feisty, they end up biting the fishermen who have caught them. And it's not just when they've hauled them in, by the way, often it's still while they're on the end of the line. Mako sharks are fighters when they've been hooked and will often leap huge distances into the air, sometimes 20 feet or higher. And because of the speed and regularity of which they do this, it makes it impossible to know where they're gonna land, which has led to several cases where the shark has ended up leaping into the air and landing in the boat. Cue, of course, carnage on board and unfortunately, potential bites. So there we are, guys. That's your short fin Mako shark creature feature. Short fin Makos are an impressive shark species. And I know there's gonna be lots of you out there for whom this shark will be your favorite. They're just truly amazingly designed predatory machines. I've got a lot of time for Makos. What was your favorite short fin Mako shark fact you learned then today? Have you got any other short fin Mako shark facts that I haven't mentioned? Make sure you let me know what they are in the comments. Before you head off though, I just briefly mentioned to you about that Mako shark attack on a spearfisher. Well, if you wanted to watch that full video and hear my analysis on it, then you're gonna wanna click on this video right here. In that video, you're gonna see that wild Mako shark encounter and some other pretty close calls with different shark species. It's well worth the watch, so give it a click here.